purpose of my work here is to teach people to see energy for what it is and not what they've been taught it is. You've been taught a false concept of energy by people who mean to use you spitefully. So far, I've defined energy from the physics perspective because that's how we're taught to think about it. I want to add to that definition an entire change of concept. First, think of energy as the ability to alter the structure of the natural world to serve the common good of all people. Second, think of energy as something that is so common and plentiful that putting a price on it is absurd. Energy, in a word, is freedom. When we want to change the world to make it better for us, it takes energy. We build houses. The building takes energy and the materials take energy to make and transport. We change the temperature in our homes for comfort and that takes energy. We pump water into our home, again it takes energy. And these are forms of energy with a known cost. We know how to quantify the cost of changing the world on a small scale, a human scale, one that is meaningful to us. We have been taught to see the whole world this way, always counting the cost. This is because we've been taught to limit our own creative potential based on the cost of the limited commodity-based sources of energy available to us. When you think of energy in terms of dollars and cents, you are comparing it to something which is numbered and therefore limited. When you measure energy in equal relation to commodity-based, hard-to-get, solid goods like oil and coal, you make it doubly limited. Energy is not limited, and no meaningful amount of money in human terms will ever be able to define it. The amount of energy in the universe is far beyond measurement in a scale we as humans are prepared to believe exists. We use units to define how things are meaningful to us at human scale. Energy is not on that scale. Energy is not something to be counted or measured or owned. Now you may think I'm waxing philosophical here, but I'm not. I'm being quite literal. If there was as much money as there is energy, money would be free. Energy is not goods or a commodity or something which is manufactured. It is a basic property of the universe. Energy is a birthright all beings in this universe, and nature sees this as so. The amount of energy nature uses every day to feed us, clean the air, give us fresh water, and regulate the climate patterns of the earth to make it habitable is not quantifiable on any meaningful human scale. It's just too much work to really grasp, and it happens every day free of charge. For example, the Amazon rainforest. The hydrological cycle of the rainforest covers most of the criteria by which we would define a terraforming machine if we built it on Mars. Machines take energy. The forests aren't just part of the scenery. They're large environmental maintenance machines which perform work humankind can't even begin to do for themselves, and they require only the energy of the sun to perform this work. Now, one of the many interesting functions of this machine, this forest, this terraforming aperture, is to regulate and sustain hydrological cycles. A hydrological cycle is just a cycle of the movement of water and is a necessary part of continuing habitability for the entire planet. The forests have a fascinating part to play in these cycles. Amazon Aid had a great article on what I mean, and I'd like to read a small excerpt. The hydrological water cycle is one of the most important functions of the Amazon rainforest. The nearly 390 billion trees act as giant pumps, sucking water up through their deep roots and releasing it through their leaves, a process known as transpiration. One tree can lift approximately 100 gallons of water out of the ground and release it into the air each day. On a typical day, the trees in the Amazon release 20 billion tons of moisture into the atmosphere, seeding the clouds with rain. As these clouds move westward across the Amazon, moisture is recycled from sky to land five to six times. The Amazon's hydrological cycle maintains the breadbasket of South America. It provides critical moisture for agriculture and urban reserves in central Brazil, Paraguay, Uruguay, and northern Argentina. Studies have found that this moisture cycle regulates rainfall patterns as far as the Midwest in the United States. Deforestation can disrupt the water cycle by decreasing precipitation, which can lead to changes in river flow and water volume. Research has shown that the Amazon needs 80% of the trees standing to continue this critical hydrological cycle. The Amazon is now at a tipping point, with approximately 81% of the forests intact. Without the hydrological cycle, it is predicted that the Amazon will turn into grasslands and, in some cases, desert. So basically, the entirety of the hemisphere in which it resides depends on the Amazon rainforest terraforming machine to do its job if they want to eat or drink. So this machine, made of trees, this rainforest, covers more than 2.5 million square miles. That entire area is covered in trees as tall as 100 feet or more in population numbers that rival the amount of stars in the Milky Way. Each of these trees is its own little machine made of a sturdy, renewable, self-repairing material which spreads more of itself until it ceases to function. These trees act as pumps, lifting 100 gallons of water a day and releasing it as vapor into the air at a higher altitude. We can't live without it, this forest machine work, but we all take it for granted because it provides this service free of charge. Have you ever paid a rainforest bill or even been asked to pay one? Now that's absurd, right? I mean, it provides a service which contributed to human good by changing the physical, natural world to make it more habitable. And all that work took energy. 
Where did the energy come from and why didn't anyone have to pay for it? Why aren't they paying for it every time it rains in the Midwest or South America? Imagine how much labor and energy would be required to perform the same service with our machines and effort. Could the human race, even united, produce a machine which would be capable of replacing that rainforest and performing the service it does? Could we even begin to power such a machine? Not with oil, coal, and gas we couldn't. And the rainforest couldn't either. It is an amount of energy which in normal human scale terms we can't even wrap our mind around. But the rainforest manages all of this without anyone ever paying a cent for it. How? Solar energy. Each of those trees has its own solar array built of interlocking green solar panels, which via the service of an amazingly complex process centering around chlorophyll, turns solar energy into energy which is usable by the trees. The trees take this energy and use it to build their own bodies, maintain those bodies, siphon their needed water from the ground, and intake and process minerals needed for construction. Every step of this process takes energy and they don't pay a dime. I'm not being absurd, I know trees can't pay, but even if they could, should they have to? Energy is their birthright. They're born with the ability to collect more than enough of their life's blood, solar energy, to sustain them into perpetuity. Because humans aren't born with leaves, does that mean that the energy shouldn't be free for us? Well, we were born without wings, but we still fly. When we wanted to fly, we made machines to make us fly. We weren't born with gills, but we could still breathe underwater. We made machines to take the air with us. And we weren't born with leaves, but I'm sure we can work around that too. And when we do, the same power that the plants use is free to us. And think of how many plants there actually are. And each one pays not a cent to live. No one will ever try to charge you for taking a picture of the moon with your own camera. No one will ever try to charge you for the solar energy that you've collected with your ingenuity either. At least they shouldn't, but I'm sure the people in charge of energy right now would love to find a way to try. Energy is not what you put in your tank. It doesn't come in gallons. Energy is not a lump of this or a tank of that. Energy is the unlimited potential to alter the physical world for the benefit of human flourishing and the elimination of want. If energy is free and unlimited, and it is, then we have the unlimited potential to alter the natural world for the good of all people. That is energy. We can water the desert, we can light the night, we can heat the cold, and we can shelter every soul. Nature already uses available energy resources to do all this work for every other creature on the face of the earth, and it's free for them. Why not us? Anyone who would disagree with this, or stand with those who would try to make us think of energy as scarce so they can benefit, has made their position clear. They are willing to sacrifice the long-term destiny of humanity and the lives of countless millions who can't afford their extortion, so they can enjoy a better life now. Now, these thoughtless few convince a world of citizens that energy is only available from them and you must pay in blood or go home. Is that who you want to buy energy from? The forest doesn't buy energy from them, it does just fine. So why do we buy energy from them when energy is free?